Whoa, here's a video from 12 years ago, Excel Magic Trick 708, about lookup multiplying. But Ahmed says 12 years of given, but what about rejuvenating this method with a dynamic array? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now here's our data setup, and this is not a proper data set, but people do get data this way. We have a name column. These are the sales reps, and there are repeats. Product 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are the sales for Sue for this particular line. Those are the sales for Sue. Over here, this is the commission table. The name is listed one time, and for each product, there's a different commission. This is one way to do it for Sue. We add it all together, the product one, and then multiplied by this particular rate. Here's how we did it in the old days. This was another option. But in Microsoft 365 Excel, there's an easier way. Let's first, for Joe, see if we can filter the data set. We want all of the sales for each one of the products. And we want to and include, say, how many of you in this column are equal to Joe? Now, for this first formula, I'm going to lock all these. So I'm going to hit the F4 key, F4 key. But that's a relative cell reference that's going to move as we copy this down. Now, if I close parentheses and Control Enter, there's the two lines of sales for Joe. Now if we could just look up this entire line, if I multiply this array times the array of commissions for Joe, the first line will be multiplied, and then the second line. So F2, we're going to multiply it by, and we want to look up a row. So we use XLOOKUP. There's the lookup value. We want to match here. It'll find row 1, comma, and in return array, if I give it more than one column, it knows to return all of the columns. Close parentheses. And if I highlight this and hit F9, sure enough, you can see it did look up the row for Joe. Control-Z and Control-Enter. Those are all the sales. So all we need to do is F2, Add. In the old days, we had to put it in some product to handle the array. But of course, we can just put it inside of sum. And I want to make sure I forgot each time to lock them. F4, F4, and that'll work. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Go to the last cell, F2. And that's a lot easier than that or this one. Now, what if I didn't want to lock all these references and manually copy this formula down? Well, in Microsoft 365, we can pretty much do whatever we want these days. Now, here's the same formula without lock cell references. And I want to get this formula to iterate down this four row range. So I'm going to put it inside of by row, because I want the formula to go row by row and make some calculation. The array is going to be this range we want to iterate, comma. And then we need to define a function. And in Excel, the way we define a function is with the lambda function. So we open up lambda. And we have to put two things here. We got to get lambda to communicate with by row so it knows to go row by row. That's where we define a parameter or a variable. You get to name it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be in double quotes. I'm going to call the variable row. And that r just represents each row in this array. Then what do we want? We want that to iterate row by row down. And guess what? Joe, Sue, Chin. So we have to put the r exactly where that cell reference is. r, double click r. And now the formula as a dynamic spilled array formula, we'll iterate down row by row and make the calculation. When I close parentheses, bam, there it is. We've spilled the result. All right, so sometimes you get these crazy data sets, which is common. We don't want to do it manually. We don't want to do it old school. We have two ways. We can do it new school with filter, XLOOKUP and SUM, and lock the cell references and manually copy it. 
or we can simply put our formula inside of by row and use lambda. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.